talk. The living a good life meant getting everything I could. But I've been showing a brand new picture of the good life. And it's glorious, y'all ready? Yeah. Hey, I was raised in that non star state where we go hard, take through a smiling owl. Big things on set, my dreams as a buck was to make a large bank. Daddy told me be the best, no one can tell me I can't. Be the best boomer, be the best rapper. Get a little older when I build the letter. Grind till I shine, trying to climb that letter. You grab a couple girls, get your boy look that boy. I saw what had it wrong Was full of drag, moving in reverse all, all alone Dreams for the pride, heart for the stone You know what had to be defined when I grind on Success is dangerous, if you don't do it right He gave us everything, for point to a right Tell the city king, gave me some new dreams Everything for his name, that's how I do things Put your hands in there, y'all close to Everybody wanna live the good life today. Talk to Even the sun goes down, heroes die eventually. Great careers end in the industry. Empires implode, you may go down in history, but everything will go down eventually. Eventually, look, yeah, you can stack bread, but you can't stop dead. And there won't be no comfort up for you with that bed. I'll get laid out, the games get played out, and the maze headed to the grave, and there's no way out. Came out last night, but face out fast. Death is coming for a sound, everything go past. So to get it from that echo day. My dreams gotta be bigger and greater than that. Let's go. I was in persecuted martyrs in Asia. Living out their dreams, they was walking in danger. Their dreams were lifting up the heart of the savior. Living in the way that shows his only thing quick. But what is jacking up the paper? Walking in the paper. Living a good life, they walk with the maker. My dreams are different, you know that I've been changed down. The good life is a life that's been laid down. The life that's been laid down. The good, okay. life. The good life is the life that's been laid down. It's the good life. How many of y'all know the good life is not the life spent exalting yourself? The good life. The good life is the life that's been laid down. It's the good life. How y'all feeling tonight? Y'all doing good? My name is Tripoli. I'm excited to be here with you tonight. Welcome to the Cross Conference. Yeah. I feel honored to be able to kick it off tonight. I want y'all to make some noise for the guys rocking with me tonight. This is Alex Medina rocking with me. This is DJ Biz rocking with me. This is Tim Dillon rocking with me on guitar. Nate the beat breaker on drum. And that first song told you a little bit about who I am. And then I'm, a, I'm the type of guy who is so self-centered, self-obsessed. And I think because I was the greatest thing that I thought I had ever seen. In my mind, I was the greatest. Uh, one way I think about it, when I was like in uh, sixth grade, I played basketball. And I went to this private school where everybody was terrible at basketball. Which meant if you were okay at basketball, you were great at basketball. And so this new kid came. He was like, I'm going to be the starting point guard. I was like, man, I'm going to be the starting point guard. And so he came, he had come from a better school, and it came time for tryouts, and all I'm gonna say is, I didn't play basketball anymore after that. What that showed me though was, is that in my mind, I was the greatest basketball player I'd ever seen until I saw somebody far greater than humble. In my mind, I was the greatest dude I had ever seen, but then I met the Lord Jesus. And when I met the Lord Jesus, the picture I had of myself came down so low. I was able to see Christ for who he truly was. And so what I want to do for this entire hour that we have is to just point to the risen Lord Jesus, who's greater than every single one of us is. And the purpose of this time, before we begin to talk about taking the gospel to others, we want to reflect on that gospel ourselves. We want to celebrate that gospel ourselves. If you came here this week, uh, this weekend, and the only thing that you leave with is a clear understanding of the gospel. Well, that's over. That's where we want to start. So can we celebrate the Lord tonight? Is that cool? Yeah. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I need your help on this next one. It's called King Like Mine, but I need your help. Can y'all help me? Yeah. 
So I want to point to Jesus as the king above all kings, greater than everybody else. So I'm going to say, you ain't got a king like mine. And I want to hear you say back, you ain't got a king like mine. Can y'all do that? I'm going to say, you ain't got a king like mine. Let me hear you say, you ain't got a king like mine. That was kind of weak and out of sync. Okay, here we go. I'm going to say, you ain't got a king like mine. Let me hear you say, you ain't got a king like mine. Okay, I'll say, you ain't got a king like mine. Let me hear you say, you ain't got a king like mine. I think they got a biz. Let's go. Click. Click. Let's go. Click. Jesus, peace. That stuff we bumpin' ain't that lean, with it? Right. 
with it. No, it's that tape, don't like it. Please let the rock hit it. I'm a sell, so we bump in the sand of Christ. From us 116, I'm bad at Christ. Left that fan, but we damn with Christ. And it's all hard, hard, dark, but we fan like Never stand a right, so what's out to the good? Found new life, cause the gospel is good. In the past, I'll thank y'all in the stood. Got messed up, let us all in your hood. We got the windows down, and when we spin the cruise, we trying to glorify the Lord with what we listen to. We bump that Rose movement. We bump that lamp mode, we back that Jesus music. Get up your hands, bro. It might be screwed and jacked. It might be East Coast. Either way, this Jesus music's hot. Bump this in your speakers, bro. The Lord ain't pleased with money and weed. So if you hit them subs, and you see us up in your street. Let's go, y'all. Riding with my top down, listening to this Jesus music. Riding with my top down, listening to this Jesus music. Riding with my top down, Jesus music. Say, don't you touch my Jesus music. Don't you touch my Jesus music. Say, you know I'm bumping Jesus music. You know I'm bumping Jesus music. Yes, sir. This Jesus that we're talking about tonight, this Jesus that we could celebrate, this Jesus that we just celebrated a couple days ago, is not a weak Lord. I absolutely hate it when I hear people talk about Jesus. And they make it seem like he was weak. They make it seem like he wasn't strong enough to take care of himself. The Jesus that I read about in the Bible is not only strong, but he's the strongest of all the strong. The Jesus I read about in the Bible is not only powerful, but he's almighty. He's all powerful. The Jesus that I see in the Bible, when there was a storm, he didn't die in the storm. He spoke to the winds and the waves and they said, yes, sir. They did what he said. And this Jesus that we talk about is the same Jesus who saw all the evil in our world, and he came to confront it. We know Jesus is the sovereign ruler. Sometimes it's hard to tell because so much evil is going on in our world. But I want to spend some time on this next song celebrating the fact that the Lord Jesus came to earth, and he confronted sin. He confronted death. He confronted the devil, and he declared war. Really? 
It might seem like the war's still going. Cut. People still dying. Sin is still potent. The devil's still tempting. Evil ain't slowing. Just wait until that trumpet gets blowing. Cause the general is coming with keys in his hands. To death and Hades, they'll freeze where they stand. Cause see, they've been defeated. Please understand. They don't want to see him blow. The king is the man. He's a man of war. A beast on the battlefield. A man of ringing out the evil forces that he killed. Where's the sting death? You don't got it, bro. Hey, where's the victory? There's the spot of home. And when his back ain't no fight in Jehovah, he'll toast you in a lake of burning fire and sofa. Attacking a soldier. He'll wipe away our tears and our fears. All the pain and death will be over. All the pain and death will be over. Yeah. I'll see death. I'll see the death. The dark will take his final breath. Let's go. Hey. But life's in the death of the pain. Make some noise for the Lord Jesus. How y'all feeling? Y'all still feeling good? I hope y'all didn't see it when I like tripped on some equipment and almost died on this side over here. Your name is Trip Lee. I thought you was on my side, man. Let a guy get some leather on his sweatshirt, he thinks he's special. <laughs> I'm just playing, man. I'm just playing. Make some noise for Alex Medina, rock it with me tonight. <laughs> when you say to folks that there's a glorious king, Jesus, who's coming back to this earth, that's full of evil, full of sin, full of pain, full of lies, Full of all sorts of evil. I'm even talking natural evil. The kind that destroys countries that you hear about. When we tell people there's a, there's a God, there's a man, a God man named Jesus who's coming back to destroy all evil. People like that. That sounds good. Like, yeah, Jesus, go get all that evil until we realize that we are some of the perpetrators of that very evil that he's come back to do away with. It's very easy for us to look out into our world, even to look out into our circle of friends and identify things that are wrong. It's a lot more difficult for us to look into our own hearts and identify the things that are wrong. So many of us live under this illusion. We'll say things like, yeah, I'm, I'm not living right, but God knows my heart. And we live under the illusion that because God knows our heart, that that works in our advantage. In uh, Psalm 53, David writes about God looking down on man. So have you ever uh, been on a plane and as you're about to land, you look out the window and you get that unique view? I almost always miss this because I fall asleep as soon as the plane takes off. But for those of you who stay up, you're about to land, you can kind of see little buildings. I was trying to show this to my son last night. You see buildings, you see lights. If it's light enough, you're close enough, you can even see little people walking around. And that's a unique thing. Well, God, God has a unique vantage point too where he can look down, but he doesn't just see an area or a city or a state or a region or a country. God sees all of the earth. And he doesn't just see little bodies running around. He sees directly into our heart. And so in Psalm 53, the psalmist says, well, God looks down on the sons of men to see if there are any who do good, any who are righteous. And what does he find? That there is none who does good. Together they have become corrupt. There is none righteous. So now when we think about King Jesus coming back to destroy all evil, to defeat all all of his enemies, it gets a little more scary because we realize that we are numbered among his enemies. It's a little more frightening. But the beautiful thing about King Jesus is that the first time he came, he came fighting on our behalf. 
that when the Lord Jesus came to this earth, he defeated sin on that cross. He defeated death on that cross. He defeated the devil on that cross. And when I think about myself, I know there's no way that I can defeat sin. There's no way that I can defeat death. There's no way that I can defeat the devil, but I'm grateful that I'm associated with, I'm united with a king who's defeated them for me. That's why we can celebrate the fact that King Jesus has been victorious because he's invited us to trust in him and to join him in that victory, to benefit from the victory that he won. It's King Jesus. So people will look at me sometimes and say, Trip, you seem like you're really confident that when you die, you're going to heaven. Why is that? You think you're, you're perfect and you're better than us? And so my response to them is, well, you got one thing right. I am confident that I'm going to spend eternity with God. But it has absolutely nothing to do with me. And it has everything to do with what Jesus and what he's done on my behalf. That the Lord Jesus died on my behalf. He lived a righteous life on my behalf that I've trusted in him. So I want to do another song celebrating the fact that when I stand before God, even though his standard's really high, I fall short of that standard. Even though he saw those vile things in my heart, because of what Christ has done for me, when I stand before God, I have nothing to worry about. I'm confident. I can stand before him with joy. I'm not saying, well, look at what I did, but look at what your son has done. All right, so this is what I'm going to say on the hook. I need your help again. Can you help me? If you can help me say yes, Trip, I can help you. That was good. So I need to ask y'all to say phrases, not hip-hop lines, because y'all sounded good when you said that. So here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, I told them brothers that his standard's too high. I ain't stood up, but they wonder how I plan on getting by. I just tell them I ain't got no worries. When I say I ain't got no worries, I need y'all to say, I ain't worried about a thing. Can y'all say that? Now, let me tell you. Let me say this. Here's what you don't say. Don't say this right here. I'm not worried about anything. <laughs> that ain't my song. Don't you do that. I worked hard on this music. Don't you do that to my song. I have security in corners watching for thumbs up. <laughs> so it's I ain't, don't say worried. It's one syllable. Say I ain't worried. About a, thing. about a thing. Some of y'all came from country places. You say thing anyway, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to say, I ain't got no worries. And y'all say, I ain't got no worries. Let's celebrate the work of Jesus. Oh, I say, oh. I told them brothers that it's too hot. I ain't stood up, but they want to have. Straight and narrow cause we sober Press into the kingdom 
them. By the power of Jehovah, and again, can't find a way to get this at it rhymes. Other than to save the Lord, I got paid to find. Ain't nobody got time for that. I told him, bro.
When we say 116, we're talking about Romans 116. It says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, if it's the power of God for salvation to all who believe, first to the Jew, then to the Greek. We're not ashamed of that gospel. That's the reason we're here this weekend. Yeah. So, when Jesus defeated sin, death, the grave, those of us who he's called into his family, there's something different that happens. When we've been adopted, something changes. So I love doing music. It makes people feel like you're not a slave anymore. You've been free. So what scripture teaches us is that we're born enslaved to our sin, blind in our sin, dead in our sin. But what Jesus does, he gives us light, he gives us sight, and he sets us free. So it makes no sense for us to try to live in sin. So I want you, I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine that you were born in a, in a four-by-four prison cell, hands shackled together, feet shackled together, and the only thing you've done your entire life is take really small steps in circles over and over and over again. No hope of ever, ever being free. And then one day a, a man comes to that cell, and this man has a key to that cell. So the man walks up to the, to the cell and he, he unlocks it and he throws the gate open and he walks in and he takes the shackles off your hand and the shackles off your feet and he steps out and he says, you follow me to freedom. But instead of following him, you decide to stay in that cell and walk in small steps like this. That's what it's like when a believer who's been freed from slavery to sin, chooses to live in sin. Jesus Christ has freed us. So I don't know what you came in struggling with today, but if you're a believer in Christ, you are not a slave to that sin. Even when it feels like you have to give in, even when it feels like the temptation is too strong, the Lord Jesus Christ frees. By the power of his Holy Spirit, we are free. So I wanted to do a song that celebrated that. I wanted to talk to the world, the flesh, and the devil and say, I don't have to believe your lies anymore. I've been freed by the grace and power of the Lord Jesus. So this song called Robot, here's what I say on the hook. Don't clap like you know it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it goes like this. It says, uh, why you always trying to control me? You are not my boss, that's the old me. Obviously, you don't know my style, because I'm, I'm not a robot now. I'm not a, I'm not a, I am not a robot. I'm not a, I'm not a robot now. I'm not a, I'm not a, I am not a robot. I'm not a, I'm not a robot now. Can I do that? Can we rack that? All right, let's do that, robot. Is anybody else in here tonight free by the gospel? I want to hear you make some noise. Hey. Okay, well let's see. Okay, we'll get them hands in the air. Hands in the air. X robots, get your hands in the air. Hands in the air. Hands in the air. X robots, get your hands in the air. Let's celebrate freedom and Christ one time. I am not your robot, I am not a clone. You and I'm a puppeteer, I am not a drone. I got a new master and I follow him alone. I wanna do it like do I'm going Really born a robot as a baby. No real life in me. I just played my role. No self control. I just did what I was told. Got my first order. I was just a day old. I didn't have a chance. My heart was way cold. My heart took the orders. It couldn't break the mold. So not the madness. Can't take control. I was just chilling. Robot clothes with my robot friends and my robot flows. Living robot ways. That's all I know. Till I heard I could be freed from my robot soul. I'm like, why you always trying to control? Games, but I don't need your lies, I ain't worried about a thing. Hey, 
change You might have been confused This is a new day I'm safe now I ain't gotta do what you say To my friends Still on lockdown Take control by they passes Stop now Cause he can free everybody from the top down If you freed up Say this with me right now I'm not a, I'm not a robot now Okay I'm not a, I'm not a robot now Okay I'm not a for the Lord Jesus. I wanted y'all to get a chance to enjoy them. And I wanted to give my chance, myself a chance to enjoy some oxygen, okay? Just to catch my breath a little bit. Is that cool with y'all? <laughs> Is anybody excited to be freed in Christ Jesus? I hope so. I hope so. It's a beautiful freedom that we have in him. There are times when I have conversations with people about this freedom that I have in Christ Jesus, and it's totally, they, they can't understand. It makes absolutely no sense to them. I was having a, a conversation with some, some high school students, non-Christians, at a high school, and I was trying to explain to them the gospel. In fact, I've been going there week after week after week, spending an hour with them in the Word, trying to explain to them the gospel. And they asked me, you know, why is it so important to tell other people this good news? I think in part wondering, why would I continue to give up time every week, every week, every week to tell them this same news? And I was trying to explain to them that this is the most glorious, important news in all of the universe. So I said, I even have some friends with a brand new baby who picked up their lives. They were living in the city, picked up their lives, not because they had to, and moved to the jungle in Peru, and I wish you could have seen their faces. They looked at me like I just told them I was an alien. It made absolutely no sense to them. And so they didn't even pretend like, oh, that sounds nice, and then talk behind my back. At that moment, they said, why? Why would somebody do that? Why would somebody pick up their lives and just go to the jungle to talk about Jesus? And what I tried to explain to them is there is nothing on this earth more valuable than the good news of Jesus. There is nothing that is better for your soul. There is nothing that is better for your life. There is nothing that is better for your eternity than the good news of Jesus. And I said, look, it's an amazing thing that people would recognize how important it is and give their lives to that. I want people to know that good news. And my prayer was that as they kind of see me, that they see a little bit of this in my life, that I order my life around what's most important. So there are other things about me, right? I'm a black man. I'm a rapper. Uh, I'm a man with an extremely busy shirt on. There are a lot of things about me. But the most important thing about me is the fact that I'm a child of God. I'm in Christ. So you can take, I mean, you can take my money from me. You could take my friends from me. You could even take my family from me. But you cannot take Jesus away from me. You cannot take the love of God in Christ Jesus away from me. One of my favorite parts in scriptures where Paul is trying to show us nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So he lives everything he can think of. Nakedness, death, famine, 
principalities, powers, nor heights, nor depth, A to Z, anything you can imagine, nothing can separate those who are in Christ from the love of God. So there's a song I have called, I'm Good. Well, I say, you could take my money, I'm good. Bring on the pain, I'm good. You can even kill me, and I'm still good because to die is gain. This relationship with Christ is unlike any other relationship. Even a marriage says till death do us part. Even death can't separate me from Jesus. It only brings me closer to him. So I, I want to do this song called I'm Good and celebrate what we have in Christ. Let's go. And when I point to you, I want you to say I'm good. Okay? We're going to say it together, celebrate it together on the hook. Four, three, two. Death is at my doorway. This is how my parents grow. That ain't what my Lord said. He said I ain't guilty even though he had my court day. Hey, I don't know what they feeling. I don't know what they thinking. Roll my soul invincible like Mario when he blinking. Hey, they see me full of joy. I don't know what he drinking. Cup is full of living water, bro. Sip it and take them. Let's go. Might not win the Grammy or get another Stella, but I'll get rewards from my Lord. He ain't nothing better. Might not try to get now. Might not sell a million, but I've been purchased by my Lord. He's forever with it. So what they talking about? Talk about they can't knock me down. Knock yes, me down. I do feel pain, feel but pain. Jesus got me now. That's why I'm making noise. That's why I'm running hard. That's why I go gorilla. Spinning the money ball. I know you know I'm good to go. Pressure creates diamonds and fire provides the gold. Ain't nothing on this planet that satisfies my soul. I'm living for tomorrow. Today is out of control. stand for me. Yes, sir. What I want to continue to do is talk about the beauty of going to be with God. That you can even kill us and to die is gain. So this next song is called Take Me There. It tells the stories of two individuals. Real rough times they're going through in the song they sing in the midst of it. Let's go. This song is about heaven. Okay, here we go. I just wanna go where I'm only breathing your air. Father, hear my prayer. Take me there, take me there. Yeah, I wanna see you. I just wanna see. Seen a brother so weighted you can tell by his demeanor 
bet he's really jaded, trying to get out this arena. He longs for something greater, they say he's just a dreamer. But he has a treasure, he holds like gold. Cause he knows something that them boys don't know. Nothing seems funny when his money's so low. But when he thinks about that place, he really wants to go. Then he ain't out concerned with the cash he can stack. He's looking to the heavens where his man's to present. But he does have treasure, he's storing it up. It seems foreign to us, he can't be stolen in the rust. When the cares in his world start weighing on them hard. And he's tired of them bills, he's been paying on his car. Can't wait to be embraced by the Lord face to face. He waits for his reward and he sings, I just want to go. My sin ain't in the way Fighting for his glory That's where I want to stay A place where shadows give way to the real The circumstances can't get the joy that I feel Got joy in my savior Satan can't steal Because he's been defeated Yeah, you know the deal The real good life I can't wait Please take me soon Till then I'll be praising in the waiting room Fighting by his grace Can't wait to embrace the groom Till then I'm like I just want to go Make some noise for the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Y'all still with me tonight? Y'all still feeling good? I want to know who came from the longest place away. If you think you came from the longest place away, raise your hand. I'm only going to spend about 20 seconds on this. Oklahoma. Did somebody come further than Oklahoma? Where'd you come from? Canada. Okay. Well, I know some people who came from Dubai, so this is over. So, yeah, I don't even know why I did that. Okay. Sorry, I just kind of tricked y'all. I wonder if that song sounds strange to you. I actually had a conversation with my sister the other day. What she said to me, I have a friend who is always saying that she just can't wait to be with Jesus. Isn't that kind of morbid? My sister, being wise, knows there's only one way to get to see him. That's through your life coming to an end. But she said, isn't that strange to be excited about seeing Jesus, knowing what it means to get there? I wonder if you have a hope similar to this song where you can cry out to God longing to be with him. I wonder if you have the kind of hope that when money is low, when friends are gone, when family is gone, when health is gone, when life is gone, that the hope that you have is still there. 
The difference between a Christian and a non-Christian is not that non-Christians have tough times and Christians don't. It's that when Christians go through tough times, we have a hope outside of this life to come. We have a hope that cannot be taken away. We have a hope that cannot fade. We have a hope and inheritance that is imperishable, lasts forever. I wonder if you have that kind of hope. A few days ago, we celebrated Christmas. Now, everybody pretty much celebrates Christmas, even people who are not Christians. I have atheist friends who give each other gifts on December 25th. I don't even challenge them on that. I just let them. We got bigger things to deal with. But that's, that's what Christmas is. We celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. We celebrate other people's births. We have birthday parties and all that. But this is different because people around the entire world who've never met this man face to face celebrate the day he was born. And somebody may wonder, if somebody had ne- j- just kind of came to our earth, they would say, what in the world is the big deal about this guy's birth? And I was reading Isaiah, and one of the reasons it's such a big deal clicked to me because Isaiah said, you know, the virgin will conceive, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And when Jesus was born, it wasn't just another man who came to earth. This was God himself in human flesh. That's a big deal. I don't know how people found out about your birth, but at least for me, it wasn't angels going and telling people nearby. I'm pretty sure it was a phone call. I don't know how your mother found out that she was pregnant. It was probably, probably a pregnancy test, not the angel Gabriel saying, do not be afraid. <laughs> there was something special about this birth. This was when the God-man came to earth. It's a big deal. And so you may ask, well, why would the Son of God make himself poor that we might become rich? Why would he do that? And Paul, in his letter to Timothy, tells us exactly why. He says, This is a trustworthy saying that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. Yes, Jesus came to to teach, and yes, Jesus came to heal and to inspire and enlighten, but Jesus mainly came to save. The Father sent the Son into the world to save sinners. He sent the Lord Jesus after us. This is one of the things that amazes me about the God of the scriptures. That even though, as we just talked about, we've rebelled against him. And when he looks into our hearts, he doesn't see beauty and goodness. He sees corruption. He's made us in his image to reflect him perfectly, and we don't. That this God who's perfectly holy, who's incredibly flawless, is not an The Bible says God is light, and in him there's no darkness. There's not an ounce, not a sliver of darkness in this God. If you were to comb through his ways, his works, his thoughts for the past year, past hundred years, past million years, you would find nothing but perfect, pure righteousness. If you were to comb through our ways and our works and our thoughts for even the last two hours, you'd find a lot of different stuff. And it's this God who sent his son after us. That blows me away. That's love like I've never heard of. And the Bible teaches this. That the way that Jesus came to save sinners wasn't just about being a good example for us, but that Jesus came and took the punishment on the cross for sin. That Jesus came and he bore the sins of those who would trust in him on that cross. He took the punishment that we deserve. Now, some people may think, you know, I don't really deserve punishment. I haven't done anything terrible. There's no such thing as a small sin against this great God. And the Bible says that it's the most heinous crime in the universe to rebel against him. And all of us are guilty. What we deserve for that is eternal death. And Jesus stepped in and took our death for us. The Lord Jesus bore the sins of those who would trust in him. And that's Amazing to me that Jesus would come to this earth. And then he rose from the grave. Jesus was not a sinner like you and me. 
he rose from the grave. You know, because of our sin, there's this, I want you to imagine there's this cup, this huge cup full of God's anger and wrath at our sin. And that was poured out on Jesus. So that instead of that wrath being poured out on us, it was poured out on him. And instead of the wrath, God is going to pour out riches of grace on those who trust in Christ. Jesus rose from the grave, defeating sin, defeating death, defeating the devil, and he's called us to trust. He's called us to turn away from those sins that put him on the cross. He's called us to look at all of the things that he hates, to let go of those things, to turn from those things, and to cling to his son, Jesus. Trying to climb our way to God's righteousness, trying to climb our way to heaven is like trying to climb a mountain with no arms or legs. You have no chance. The only chance you have is if the Lord Jesus grabs a hold of you and carries you. Scriptures say Jesus died once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. So my question for you tonight is have you been saved by Jesus? Have you turned from your sin and trusted in this Jesus? I'm going to say it again. If the only thing you leave with at the end of this conference is an understanding of the gospel, is a relationship with the God who created you, well, this will be the greatest moment in your life. But I want to encourage everybody to ask themselves the question, who is Jesus to me? Have I trusted in him? really good news. So I want to, with one last song, celebrate this great news. That the Jesus we're talking about isn't just a teacher or a helper, but he's a deliverer. He's a rescuer. He's a hero. So if you choose to go somewhere else and tell people about Jesus, don't let it be about a Jesus who's weak. Don't tell them about some Jesus who's just a teacher. Tell them about the Jesus who saved. Tell them about the Jesus who's sovereign. Tell them about the Jesus who's already saved the day. I hope y'all can worship with me on this last one. Let's go. Like a jeep, I, yeah, you rushed to rescue me. Took the cross in exchange for a throne to save me. Yeah. You began the work and the I know says, you cause you're my hero. You already right saved when the when day. You come back. Cause you're my hero. Oh, oh, oh. You already oh, saved the day. day. Yes, you're my hero. Whoa, whoa. And I know you're coming back. And I know you're coming back. I want everybody to get their hands in the air right now and make some noise for the Lord Jesus, who is the hero who's already saved the day. Make some noise for the Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. Creation's grown in. Now stay home till they always close in. That's it, COVID on the ropes with Satan in the open. Destroy all his enemies and then he'll walk with us. New heaven, new earth. That's 
That's where all his sheep dwell. Jesus succeeded in every part of life that we failed. That is just we couldn't die. Paid our place with three nails. Began to work, keep promise. In the end, we all will be well. Already beat his enemies when his kingdoms realized. All those who oppose him, we see Jesus with some real eyes. Deliverance is all for us. The hero he is urging us. Salvation is exclusive to his people. Return to trust. Thank y'all so much for your time. Let me pray for us real quick, and I'll give us some more instruction. Father God, we thank you so much for what you've done for us in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this amazing message, the good news of Jesus. I pray, Father, by your spirit, you'd help all of us to understand that message, to trust in the Christ of that message, and to take this message to others. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.